So let's work through how we can draw a graph, and it's just going to be a rough sketch, if we have our function written as a series of factors. As a, sometimes you'll see this written as a product of linear factors. Yes, I hear you. Even though that's a squared on that factor, I'm going to say it's linear because the factor itself is an x to the first. Okay? So, as long as the solutions, when we set this equal to zero, are real numbers, then all of these right, zeros are also x-intercepts. So I'm not going to label my y-axis, but I will tick mark my x-axis. And there's some things I need to look at. So one of the things I need is, what's the degree of my polynomial? And I don't want to multiply all that out, and I know you don't either. So I have an x. I just need to count up my powers. So I'll have an x here, an x squared here, and an x here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So x to the fourth is the power of my leading term, and its coefficient is just going to be a positive 1. Okay, so my end behavior is going to act like a 1x to the fourth, which means that both ends go up. Okay, so I have that in the back of my head. Now I'm going to go plot my x-intercepts. I have 1 at positive 1. I have 1 at negative 3, and I have 1 at positive 4. Okay. So what I like to do is to go to my furthest out intercepts and draw my end behavior. Right, so it's going to be here and go up. Okay. Oh, okay, we'll get that in just a second. I was going to say we can find our y-intercept. You can too. We'll find it here in just a minute. But I want to call your attention to this, this funky one here. So this squared factor, when you have a factor that's repeated an even number of times, so x plus 3 squared, since this 2 is an even number, this x-intercept here doesn't actually cross, but it bounces back. So hit and bounce back. Okay. I don't know exactly what happens in here, but it's going to go up uh, some distance, turn around, come back down, and I get to my x equals 1 for my x-intercept. came from this factor here. This one doesn't have a repeater. We, uh, multiplicity is a word you might hear, so it cuts across. It goes down a certain amount. I don't know how much yet. When you get to calculus, you can learn that. And then it comes back up to hit that other intercept. Okay? At 4. So how would I find the y-intercept, though? Or specifically, how would you find the y-intercept? Yep, so you know for sure that x equals 0. If I'm looking for the y-intercept, we know for sure that x equals 0. So I find y of 0, just by pl and I don't have to multiply it all out, right? That's not required. I just need to put zeros in for all of those x's. So I'll have negative 1 times 3 squared times negative 4. So negative 1 times 9 times negative 4, it looks like positive 36, which I didn't scale for a reason. Okay, so 0, 36 right there. All right, so now the other thing I want to do on this video is how could I find a function if I know the zeros? So I know we just did that one. So let's see. If we can figure something out here. So let's cross there, up, come down there, down around, and then back up. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. We'll make that five. All right. And I'm going to call my y-intercept 10. So here's how we go about doing that. So this was negative 2, this was positive 2, and that was positive 5 for my x-intercepts. 
So we start with our y equals. So now, in order to make sure I hit this 0, 10, I need to do that with a scaling factor. So I'm just going to put an a placeholder in here for a second. And then I just write all of my factors that correspond to these x-intercepts. So if you know the x-intercept, it's x minus the x-intercept. x minus the x-intercept. For the 5, x minus 5. Yes, so we'll fix that. So a times x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 5. All right, so far so good. This is almost there. It has all of the right x-intercepts. But now I need to fix my y-intercept. I need to make sure that this function goes through the point 0, 10. And I can only do that with this coefficient. If I try to just add on 10 or subtract off 10 or something like that, then it throws off all of those zeros. Okay, so I can't just do it with a plus minus thing on the end here. I have to do it by scaling the whole graph. So this is my 10 is my y value. A, I don't know. It's what I'm looking for. But x is 0. So 10 equals a times 2 times negative 2 times negative 5. 10 equals, what is that, 20a? So it looks like a is 1 half. So your final answer, to put a bow around, y equals 1 half x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 5. All right.